Council, are we ready to um, resume our proceedings? If we are, please um, proceed accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We are ready to proceed. Mr. Usher, can I ask that you bring the witness in? Thank you. Welcome back, Ms. Jalo. Thanks. Did you have a good break? <laughs> but you're still under oath. Right. And so you have an obligation to um, tell the truth. Right. Prior to the break, we talked about the preliminary rounds um, of the 22nd July 2014 pageant. Then we talked about the competition itself. And then we talked about the first meeting um, at State House. It was a group meeting, and it was when um, former President Jame was receiving an award. Then there was a second official meeting, uh, which you spoke about before the break. Right. And that meeting was also a group one, and it was the actual courtesy call on the president as he was the main sponsor of the 22nd July. Um, pageant. You talked about the conversations um, during the two meetings as well as um, gifts that he gave um, to all the winners. And you also mentioned a few names um, that we also took note of. One point of clarification for you. Um, you mentioned that the date of the Miss 22nd July pageant itself was the 21st or the 22nd of November 2014. Um, was that the date of the competition itself or um, another, the preliminary round? No, the competition itself. The competition itself was? Yes, um, in December the 21st to 22nd. Do you have, um, and I know you said this in the beginning, that you have problems recalling dates. Yeah. Do you have anything that will help guide you in terms of dates? Um, so the preliminary one was, um, oh, November 21st or 22nd. That's for the preliminary rounds in 2014. And the pageant is the 6th, December 6th. So I have a, a screenshot of pictures that I took on certain dates so, and so I can fill in the gaps of the dates with um, the pictures I printed out, yeah. So these are your own personal pictures? Yes. And based on the dates of various pictures, then you're able to plot the events, events yeah. based on that. Yeah. Um, in your statement, you provided a date um, regarding the courtesy call. Right. Um, if I can just tell you that. The courtesy call that the winners paid to the president. Right. And the date that you mention, um, is the 24th of December, 2014. Right. Um, are the dates in your statement accurate, as far as you recall? Well, to the best of your knowledge. Right, so to the best of my knowledge, when I was writing that with the dates, I did refer back to events online and also the videos that are available at GRTS to connect what date it was sown, so that was the day, because it was a live so. So that's where I got most of the dates from, yeah. And so we can take the 24th of December, 2014, as the date of the courtesy call, courtesy meeting that you just spoke about before the break. As I recall, but you can confirm with the gender department. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, that's very helpful because obviously if you don't recall a date, that's perfectly normal. Um, if you do, or if you found out later on, we want to know how you found that date and what's the basis um, for you to say something in particular. Right. And of course, we can cross-check that um, right. based on what we have. So this second um, meeting at State House, it ended and um, you were about eight or nine. So from what you've said, you were 10 winners or about 10 winners, about. Um, but one or two would normally not show up because they were very far away. Right. Um, on this particular day, after the meeting, can you tell us what happened? Um, after the meeting, we did not um, go straight home. We went back to the hotel that we were at. Um, and uh, f the minister at the time, Fat Lamin Faye, asked um, us to have our accounts open. So someone was sent from um, GTB, Gambia Trust Bank, to open accounts for us because we had $200,000 cash in our hands and it wasn't safe to go home with that money. So that's what we did. We spent the night over there before we went home. So after you went home, right. what else happened in terms of your, either your interactions with the Ministry of Education, um, the Gender Department, or with State House? Just sequentially, what do you recall happening next? Um, before that happened, the, the official meeting when it ended, I remember Aisha telling us to start working on our projects and um, they will look at it so we can look at a way to implement it. That is the project we promised to do. Um, the next interaction we had was towards the event of New Year's Eve. Yeah. So when Aisha, um, who you've told us was a member of the gender department of the Ministry of Education, right. when Aisha told you that you should work on your projects, right. did she tell you anything else about the process and what you could expect? So for example, was there a deadline? Did, you, did she provide any other information about what would happen once you've submitted the project? Right. Um, she said they will take a look at the project and then look at how to find, how to implement it. But she said nothing about deadlines. There was no deadline for the project. Yeah. And at this point, would it be right in assuming that the projects referred to are those of the two winners? Or was it everyone's project, all ten of you? No, the winners. Apart from what she told you, did they say anything else about any form of assistance they would provide or any other? No, that goes back to the statement of we will take a look at it and we will see how to implement it. Um, she didn't go into either how much or what budget allocation or none of that, yeah. So it was all very vague at that point. Yes, it's basically go walk on what you promised to do, do that first, that's the first part, and then we'll take a look at it, yeah. Um, but what was clear was that you would have to take it to the Ministry of Education. Yes. And that was the channel through which it would be processed. Yes. <laughs> so um, tell us what happened after that. Um, then we were looking to attend the events of their New Year's Eve, um, which took place starting from the 9th of the 30th, was it the 30th or the 31st? So yeah, the 30th of December at 11.34 p.m., um, we went to um, a five-star hotel, I forgot the name, but that's where the celebration was happening. I think it's Coco Ozon. Um, we went there for that night, we had our dresses on, and then we spent, we were there until the morning of um, January 1st. Yeah. Um, we will admit, um, what you're looking at, your memory aids, so to speak, for dates right. later on. Um, I do have copies, Mr. Chairman, but unfortunately they're not in color. 
Um, so I could still provide it if it would be of use to the commissioners. Um, while the witness is referring to the, uh, the dates and the photographs, then you can see what she's talking about. Um, because just now, for example, she referred to a specific time, but that's because of the screenshot, and it was very clear when that um, photograph was taken, so the date and the time is stamped on it. So I will provide copies, but we will continue and then the, the version that we will admit into evidence, um, you'll get a chance to look at it, which is in um, colored, colored print. You're going to enter it as an exhibit uh, to be good for us to see. Thank you so much, Council. Um, so the New Year's Eve event um, was at Cocoa Ocean, right. and you just told us that you went there on the night of the 30th December. Right. And um, can you tell us what happened? Well, first of all, tell us what you were told about the event, what you, um, what you could expect on that particular occasion, as well as who informed you of it. Right. Um, so we had um, invitation letters that we were given to us um, to Auntie Aisha. I'm not sure who gave it to her. I will assume it's um, Jimbe. And Auntie Aisha told us that there's an event, um, the New Year celebration, and there's a table for us. Uh, was it platinum or gold? But there was a table for the Miss July 22nd folks to sit on. Um, I, that's part of the invitation letters I've shown to you. Um, so that, that was the process in which we were invited. So it was just a dinner that we were supposed to have. And then um, there was a performance, but I don't remember which artist exactly right now. And so we were there. We got there late. We were there until we got into the New Year's Eve. And then we ate and we took pictures. And as we were sitting there, we saw, this is the first time I have seen um, another winner from the previous years, I'm not sure which year exactly. And she walked in with other girls and other protocol officers. And they passed our table, like, oh, hi, how are you, Nang and Dev? And I recognized her, because I've seen her on TV. And um, she's like, hey, congratulations. I'm like, yes, thank you. Um, I expected us to be on the same table, but we were not. She and the uh, other girls sat at another table, whilst I was on the table with um, the girls that I competed with. Yeah. So during this New Year's Eve event, where you um, you told us what happened, but were you expected to play any particular role, or you were just there as guests? As guests. Um, did you spend the night at Coco Ocean after um, the dinner? No, we went home after the dinner, but we were there until about two. Yeah. In the morning. Yeah. Right. Um, after that, what was the next um, event that you attended in relation to um, yeah your position as a winner of the 2014 pageant? Right. Um, so before an event happened in between the 31st to the, fr um, to the, 31st to the 1st of January, I received a call um, from Jimbe January 3rd. We, have, we are already in the next year in 2015. Um, and then she called me and she introduced herself again and then I explained to her that I was working with a team, but her call was to ask me about my project, the same project that we are supposed to work on. And um, I told her that I wasn't done with it because I'm working with a team. Um, she then asked me to do it quickly and that also um, I could take it to her for a pro faster process than to take it to the Ministry of Education, which sometimes at the end of the day just lays there. But most importantly, it ends up with them anyway. So it's just cutting the process of getting the project to them because they're the ones sponsoring the project. So when she said that, um, how did you feel about, about it? 
Um, I just felt anxious for a second because I know I have not started putting anything together, so that's what my focus was mostly on. Because the line between the Ministry of Education, what they're supposed to do, or what C is supposed to do, is a bit blurry. And for the first time, she's actually telling me, or I'm getting information on a kind of a deadline, like do it quickly and then bring it, and then the, cross, the process is going to be cut, and also who is sponsoring the project as well. So in that moment, I felt like I felt pressured a bit, but on the project, because I know that I haven't started putting so much together. Yeah. So what happened after that? Um, yeah, she hung up. She called me again with a no caller ID. That's what that was. Um, and then I told her I would. So a few days later, she called back again to ask me about the project that I did not get back to her with the project and how is it going. So I told her that I've gone far into the idea of it, but I am working on the budget. I don't know how much exactly will be needed for it. I remember going to a friend of mine. Um, I remember Satang and Absa and Innocent. I went to them and we sat in Innocent's house and we were brainstorming on the idea and how much we think fuel will cost to go to the provinces and all that. Um, but that wasn't done and I told her that, that I wasn't done with the budget part of it. And she said that I could still bring it to the state house that she will, they, she said, we will take a look at it. So when she said, we will take a look at it, I'm not assuming who is we, because I do not know the system and it is never explained. I'm assuming there is an office that is responsible for scholarships or the pageant or whoever the we was. But that is um, what she told me. So we're still at the beginning of January because it was January 3rd when she called, right. asked about your project. Then a few right. days later, she called to follow up. Right. Um, what happened after that? Did you speak to her again or did something else happen? No. Um, so the call, the first call that she called me to ask me about the project was before um, January 3rd. And January 3rd was the actual day, the second day she asked me if I wasn't done with it, or the budget part of it on January 3rd. And she said I could still bring it in even if the budget isn't done. Thank you for that clarification. Right. So what happened after January 3rd? Um, on January 3rd, because she said that I was supposed to bring it in, she asked me to come to the state house and she said that a driver was coming to pick me up at my home in Yundum and the driver did come at my home in a jeep and I guess he came sometime at either 10 or after 10 because I took this picture January 3rd at 9.37 p.m. That's before he came, so he had come around 10 or after 10 to pick me up from home. Um, so he did come and pick me up that night. That was the first night I um, met with the president. So, yeah. That was quite late in the night, yes. after 10 p.m. Yes. When she, um, when she called you to go, what was your reaction, considering the time? Again, because he had said that this is um, urgent at the time, um, I was more nervous about the project again not being the best I could present than I was about the time of it. Because at this point, we have gone to events, and every time we had gone, whether it is the official meeting or events, we had stay up to 2 or it is late. So 10 o'clock becomes... Um, normal time for me to either have interacted officially at the state house or at events. So you said a driver was sent to, um, to pick you up. Right. Was there anyone else with the driver? No. So the driver arrived, um, you got into the vehicle and you were taken to state house? Yes. 
Can you tell us what happened upon arrival at State House? Um, we got to State House and we passed the main gate. Um, there was no screening of um, my bag this time around or like I did the first time I passed. And um, the driver said hi. I was in the back seat. He never brought down the window to say hi to whoever the guards were. And then he went inside. He passed the garden and also passed the second gate that goes into the residence of the state house. There was also another guard there. On the two previous occasions when you went to the state house, had you entered the gate leading to the residence or were you in a different part of state house? Different part of state house, the first part of it. So this was your first time entering the residence yes. area? Yes. Yeah. Um, tell us what happened when you entered. Um, we passed the second gate and um, the guard was like, hey, Moro, like greeted the driver. And the car went all the way to stairs that, leaded, that led to a house. And um, Jimbi was standing there. So I got off the car. She said, oh, agony. I got off the car and Jimbi's like, how are you? Hi. Um, um, I'm glad that you are here and on time. And then she chatted with the driver a little bit. And the driver drove to go around and exit the door. And I climbed the, stay, the, the stairs and Jimbi asked me to follow her. At that point, did you know the name of the driver? that took you to State House? At this point, did I know? Um, yes, because of the night that we were going to the New Year's celebration, he's the same driver that took all of us with the other girls, so I knew his name from that. Um, yeah. And can you tell us his name? Landing, um, I call him Landing Jame because that's what I've referred to him. Um, he has, however, come out to say that he's not landing Jamme, that he is landing Sanya. Where did you get the last name Jamme from? Um, that's what I've called him. I'm not sure where I picked that from, but throughout our going and coming back, I've always called him that, and he never rectified me or tell me that is not my last name. But when he came out to um, basically take issue with his name, his right. last name, right. um, did you recognize him as the same person that you've been referring to as Landing Jame? Yes, I did. Okay, so the driver Landing San is the one who dropped you um, th that night um, after 10 p.m. on 3rd January 2015. Yes. Uh, Jimbe met you, Jimbe Jame, at the... When the car, at the bottom of the stairs, yeah, and then um, you went upstairs. We went upstairs. Tell us what happened. Um, when she got to the door, it was locked, so she had to knock on the door. And I think she was on her phone too, so I don't know if she sent a text message or what, but she was on her phone. And she knocked on the door, and um, a guy who I would come to know as King Papa came and um, opened the door. He was not wearing shoes. Um, he was barefoot, so he opened the door, and Jimbi went in, and I followed her. And she's like, oh, Kim Papa, Kimoi Tufa, that is Tufa. So he, she introduced me to him. That is how I knew his name. And he's like, oh, welcome. So Kim Papa led the way, and then I followed with Jimbi. We went, we passed um, two living rooms on both sides. And then we passed another entrance that looks like an office or a waiting area. And then there were stairs, like five steps onto the stairs. And then you turn, and then you take five more other stairs. And when we got there, there was um, um, an office. But it looks like a, a office, but it has like a glass, like when you go to the hospital. It has a, um, a glass that you can slide for someone to talk to you through the, the opening. And there was a TV, a small TV in it. There was mattresses on the floor. And um, so when we got there, Kim, um, Kim Papa or another oddly, I'm not sure who asked this, asked me to give in my bag and my phone, which I did. And they put it on the side inside. There were two people inside the room. Um, they were wearing 
it's not a military uniform, but it's navy green ish. And um, one was sitting down on the on the on the sponge on the bed. One was sitting on the table, leaning back to watch the TV. And um, Kim Papa told us to wait. So there were two chairs on the side. I sat on that chair with Jimby. And Jimby was like, oh, how have you been? Um, you have been telling you to work on this project. How far is it? And all that. So I told her I have it because I had a paper in my hand. Um, so Kim Papa came out. Not completely. She op he opened the door and told us, do excellent, excellent, yeah. So before that, let's clarify a couple of things. Right. Um, at that point, did you know what King Papa's role was um, at the State House? No, but I just um, thought he was a soldier, just a general soldier. You mentioned that um, there was one orderly who took your phone and your bag. Yes. And then you mentioned two other people who were inside the room that you described. Yes. So am I right in understanding that apart from yourself and Jimbe, there were four other people? No. Okay. There was Kim Papa, there was the guy who was lay, um, laying, uh, sitting on the, on the bed on the floor, and there's the guy that is sitting down and watching the TV. So the orderly who took your bag would have either been... Um, one, one of them who went back in. One yeah. of the two, okay. Yeah. So there are three of them. I want to clarify um, something. Did you know the names of the other two? No, because we did not interact except, yeah. So King Papa, you said you knew because Jimbe had introduced you yes. to him. Um, prior to this testimony, I had shown you pictures um, because we're trying to identify who you referred to as King Papa. Right. I will sh um, ask the usher to bring the same photographs. Right. Um, they're of different individuals. Right. I believe it's about four photographs. And if you can um, look at them again and point, point out which one of them is, um, is King Papa. I'm going to label them as A, B, and C. A, B, C and D. And if you can just identify um, which one of those individuals is King Papa. A. Can you take a look at the others as well? Um, but yes, put A aside. A and C. So if I can ask you to write King Papa on each document and sign it with today's date, being the 31st of October, 2019, and then um, can you please hand it to the usher? So because we had previously asked you about these photographs, we're able to conduct our own investigations. Right. And um, we're able to identify the individual that you've referred to, you've identified here, as Major Aliu Sanyang, who's currently serving in the Gambia National Army. But you know him as King Papa. Right. Um, can you please hand this to the commissioners? And then, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would seek to admit the two relevant documents into evidence. <laughs> Chairman, with your permission, I would seek admission of um, the two documents that have been identified as King Papa, signed by the witness as exhibits 0095A and 0095B. Request granted.
Thank you very much. So thank you for um, providing that clarification. We've identified who was present on that first um, visit that you made to um, the president, former president's residence. You said you waited outside um, or in a hallway or a corridor. You waited somewhere. In a corridor. In a corridor. Yeah. You waited with um, Jim Bay, who you spoke to, and then at some point, King Papa um, called you inside. Called us, yeah. You and Jim Bay. Yeah. Can you tell us what happened next? Um, we walked into the room. There was no one in the room. Um, it was a big living room, and it has brown um, leather sofas on it. But the wood on the side of the sofa is brown, but the weather, the leather material itself looked um, more like the drapes of um, the commissioner's table. And um, so we got in, there was a big screen and Al Jazeera was on. So we sat, Jimby sat down and in took the uh, remote, increased the volume. And as he started to ask me about school and how is school and just petty talk or just talk, nothing related to like it's hot and general um, conversational engagements. And he's like, oh, Mungi um, Julie, like, uh, the president is praying he's going to join us soon. So now at this point is when I realized that the we that he's talking about is not a team of um, scholarship experts or people that fund it, but it's actually the president because he didn't say Guy Nguyenyo, he said he is praying and he will be coming. Um, so we sat there and waited. So, because I left at um, 9.37 from Yundum to Banjul, we would get there by after 10, and um, like way after 10, almost 11, and we waited for like an hour and a half, if somewhere roughly around there. We were there, and the whole time, um, Jimby was on her phone, I was mostly on the TV because it was a long time and she was almost leaning back um, in the chair and with one foot on it. Um, so as we were there, after one and a half hour, the president walked, walks in to the room. Now, this is the first time I am actually meeting him or seeing him up close. Um, and he had, he didn't have the, the big shirt that he wears or the second or the third one. He had um, the last piece of angarambu, as you would say, and uh, trousers, as you would say. So he walked in, and as soon as he walked in, Jimby stood up, right? Um, Sa Excellency, Sa Excellency. Now I know what that is later on, but... Um, so can you tell us what it is? It, so there is the faster pace of Sa Excellency, yeah. And um, I got up, and then he shook my hand with one hand, and then um, hugged me, and then tapped me on the shoulder. But nothing touchy, or it's just a fatherly hug. And then he asked me to sit down. So Jimby went right back at the chair that she's sitting at, and. Um, the chair set up, the sofa set up was like an L, you would say. And we were on the shutter part of the L, and he sat next to where you have the arm of the chair. And then I sat, he told me to sit next to him in that same chair. Basically went on to, to congratulate me and to say, you guys did a great job. And he went into the competition, the night of the competition, and he's like, who taught you how to play the riti? Or um, where did you get that idea from? So he got into that conversation and I explained to him and he's like, that's good. Um, but he keep insisting that I was a stubborn girl, like you're very stubborn. And um, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know what he meant by that. I don't know if he is calculating whatever I was presenting on stage versus 
me the first time saying that I would not come and then later came or oh he got some news about me but I wasn't sure what he meant by that at the time um, he also went on to talk about childhood stories that he did not feel like he did fit in right and I was kind of surprised that we are having that conversation in that moment but he went on to talk about parts of his childhood in Canning Lai how he would drive a bicycle from some school that was far from Canning Lai to go there and how his mom was in another village but then the other family was in another one and um, how some guy from Combo who lived in the village but moved from the Combo had this kid who will always show people that he is a Kombonka and you know they're more wise and all that so he went into those stories and I was just listening the entire time and then he will switch in between to talk about what was on Al Jazeera and then back to him talking um, one of his other main um, concern about me too was my age so he wanted to confirm with me. He said, I, I did hear at the competition, you know, you mentioned how old you are. And then he asked me, are you sure that you are 19 years old? And I admitted that I was 19 years old. And then he said that, nope, there's no way you can be 19. You don't act 19, you don't talk 19, and you don't behave as a 19 year old. I insisted that I was 19. Um, at this point, Jimby chipped in to say that that is actually a legitimate question, but also kind of laughed about it. So it was after all of this that he asked about the project. He said, oh, so what did you put together? I went on to explain to him my idea on organizing a debate competition within the, um, um, like, the provincial areas and also around this area. Um, no, I was talking about around this area that I wanted to organize a debate competition and a drama competition here on poverty alleviation and whoever won would be given a platform to implement that idea in their respective uh, constituencies. Then he said that was a great idea that he doesn't mind, that is awesome, I should work on the budget, but also his input was that I should include provincial schools, that we should kind of decentralize what we do. But that was the summary of what happened that night. Nothing inappropriate, and it was a sowing of a father figure. It, it, I didn't feel threatened. I didn't feel um, um, that he was at any point either staring at me or my parts or saying anything inappropriate in that moment and on that day. So I'd like to go over some of, um, some of the information you provided. Right. You said at one point he said he did not fit in. Right. Um, what exactly did he mean by that? Did he say? I think that is what the rest of the other explanation was about. Um, him in the village and the struggles that he had to go to or he, I, I, I don't know why he, but he said that he did not feel like he fit in and then he went into all these stories. You said um, at that point he said to you, um, well, he said he didn't believe that you were 19 years old. Yeah. This was on the 3rd of January 2015. At that point, you would have still been 18, isn't that correct? Yes, before my birthday, yeah. Did he refer to you as 18 or 19? Um, I think 19. I think he was calculating the years and not the month. Yeah. And then he said, you do not, did he say you do not behave like a 19 year old? And I do not talk like a 19 year old. And you do not talk like yeah. a 19 year old. When he said that, how did you feel? Um, it wasn't a surprise or a suck for me, 
because I've heard it in society over and over again, right? And we usually, as a culture, as a society, do sexualize girls at a very early age. So for me, being someone that had a bigger bone, I grew very fast physically. And um, I've heard it from cousins from a young age, when I was even way younger than 18, who will tap you on the soldiers and say, yeah, you mag de, yo, you know, or like, you, you should be married off soon, or you have, you know, the structure of an older person. In school, some teachers that will say that. So it wasn't a statement that was new to me to drift me off of my, it's like something that I have heard and experienced time and time again. And um, so it was just, to me, I was just like, here we go again. Yeah. But when you heard the comment, you understood it in relation to um, also your physique. Yes. You said after that, um, you talked about your project, and he gave some advice about the project. And then you felt that that entire interaction was almost like a father, um, father figure. All right. And so at that point you felt comfortable, there was nothing that you thought was, was wrong in right. the situation. Right. You told us that you arrived, um, based on the timing that you gave, uh -huh. um, you would have arrived somewhere close to 11 p.m. at State House. Right. Then you maybe spent about an hour and a half waiting. Right. Um, so let's say moving more towards 1 a.m. in the morning, between 12.30 and 1 in the morning. Right. Or thereabouts. Right. And then he came, and then you had this conversation. How much time did you spend talking, as far as you recall? Um, another hour and a half, I would say. Yeah. One. An hour. An hour is fair, yeah. So you would have um, left State House somewhere close to two in the morning, is yes. that correct? Yeah. Um, can you tell us how the conversation or how that visit ended? Was anything else discussed or um, how did it end? Um, so Jimbe, as I told you, was on this chair, kind of leaning back with the leg on. So but he's facing the TV and I'm on this side of it. And the president, when he, he used his, um, his feet, cause he was sitting on the sofa and be like, hey, get up, like stop snoring on my, on my chair. And then Jimby got up and then went. She came in with um, a bag, a brown little bag. And then they said that this is a gift from them. This is a gift from us. And the gift, yeah. Oh. Um, who said this is a gift from us? Sorry? Which one of them said this is a gift from us? Jimbe, I think. Please continue. Yeah. And um, it was a chain. It was a, a gold chain, two of them. One is a bigger one, and one is just one with a little a piece on it. I still have them. Um, so she said to me that, um, like, you deserve it, and the president said that it was for the good job that I had done with the project, and this is like a show of appreciation for what I did. So when Jimbe gave you that gift, was it in the presence of the president or not? It was in his presence. And so she was saying to you, um, the president appreciates, she was basically telling you what the purpose of the gift was while the president was still standing there. No, so she brought it and then she said, this is a gift from us. The president went on to say that it is for the good job I have done. So it was a, a conv it was a, it was sifting from him to her and then Jimby said that I deserve it, yeah. What happened after that? Um, that was it. I, I shook his hand again, and when I went out, I picked up my phone and my bag, again still with Jimby, and we walked out of the same way we came, and the car was already there that brought me, landing, and I jumped into the back of the car, 
and um, he took me home. So during that first um, private conversation that you yeah. had with the president, you talked about your project. Was there any mention of the scholarship? No. No. So because the idea was that whatever scholarship it is or wherever you are going to, you have to finish this project first, that it was a prerequisite for it. So even in the last statements of all of us in the pageant was, if I win as Miss July 22nd, I would do this and this and that. So you had to do that before you had left. So to me, I was assuming we haven't gotten to the scholarship conversation yet, because I haven't done what is expected of the winner first. After um, he gave you suggestions on what to do regarding the project, right. was anything else discussed about the next steps? Like when, for instance, they would expect you to submit the final project or um, what you could expect going forward? So what he told me to go and change was their, um, the, 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 the group that I was involved in, so the fact that it is just in the combos. His suggestion was that I should include the provinces and then he will take a look at it again. But there wasn't um, anything further than that or, or we will look at the budget or looking at it in hindsight was to stretch um, whatever work that it was that I was supposed to do with the project, like go and do that one, bring it back, and then I edit it, you go and do this other part as well. Well, I'm sure we'll get to that step by step. Right. But after that first private visit, you said um, that landing the same driver, so right. we're referring to landing Sanyang. Right. Um, then took you home, <coughs> and so you would have arrived home quite like quite early in the morning between two and three in the morning or let's thereabouts yeah because it will take an hour from banjo so let's say three in the morning i got home when you arrived at home um was anyone waiting for you or did you um did you, were your parents aware of what was happening yes so before i left i did tell my mom that um jim b has called for um to take a look at my project, that they are going to take a look at the project. So she did know that. And she has been calling me, but because my phone is um, with the security guys, I never saw it. So I was coming home. When I got home, we have a main door that you need someone to open from the inside. So when I got to the door, I was knocking on the door. I thought she was sleeping. Then I called, but she was already awake. She had the door of the house open, and she was sitting in the corridor of the house. So when I knocked the door and then I called him, he came out and opened the main gate of the house. And then she said to me, Kuri jump. Like, um, I don't know. Um, Kuri kaira. I don't know. But meaning like it's an expression of, oh, is everything okay? Right? And um, so I'm like, it's actually fine. It's just that when we got there, I had to wait for one and a half hour. She said, one and a half hour waiting for what? I said, the president. And then she said, yeah, but this is late. And can't they have you over working hours? I said, they could, but um, next time I guess I will ask. She said, so you were there just until now? I said, yes. And then she asked me what happened. And then I explained to her, and I remember that I was the one who was telling her, it's okay, like nothing happened or anything, I was there. And she was more concerned about the soldiers and the guards. Her concern and her being scared wasn't that because I was there with the president. Because I guess she assumed with the president, I am safe, I am fine. So it's, oh, I'm going to money sold and you know, hope they didn't talk to you, hope this and that. I said, no. But when I told her that I was there with the president and with Jimby, that felt a bit, oh, okay, you're good, you're safe. So um, that's what I summarized for her, what I'm supposed to edit. She's like, okay, that's fine. That's the, that's the mini conversation we had. And then she went to her room, and then I went to mine. So that was the night um, of the 3rd of January um, into the 4th. Right. <coughs>
can you tell us what happened um, after that? When was your next contact with either Jim Bay or the president or anyone from the gender unit of the Ministry of Education? Um, so the next call I got, so what was happening in between the four private calls that we had, there were general events that were also happening with the rest of the girls. So January 10th, but I think it started in January um, 9, Pap Juve came to Gambia in 2015, and we were supposed to attend. So again, that was related to us by the Severan, Auntie Aisha, me and the girls. Um, we were dressed, and then we went to this event. We were there, Pap Juve dancing and having fun, and we had a table to us. We were there, this picture, January 10th, was taken at 3.31 a.m. Um, so there's an event that happened after the first visit in between before the second visit. Just so, And in this general, in this event, all the girls went and the same landing picked me up and all the other girls to go for this event as well. Being that it was the 10th of January, had you already um, resumed classes or school? Because you were at the Gambia College at that point. It should have been. I was going, yeah. So do you recall if this event was during the week or the weekend? No, I can't recall. It's January, no. What you recall is that there is a photograph of you at around 3.31 a.m. Um, what else happened after that particular event, or before that? Right. Were um, you invited as guests, or did you have to do anything specific during that event? No, again, as a guest, yeah. So what happened next? What is the next event after that? Um, there was an event I had at the college, and... Um, so, um, that was January 14th. So January 30th, yeah, there is an um, event what, that... Sorry, what was the event um, on January 14th at the college? Um, I had a speech there. I cannot remember, but it was an outdoor event that took place. I, I don't remember what exactly, but I know I was there. Uh, yeah. Please continue. You were talking about the end of January. Uh, one second. So, January 14th, after January 10th, when the Pap Juve event happened, I met the president for the second time um, on January 14th, because I took this picture at 7.13 p.m on this day. So that would have been your second private meeting with the president, is that correct? Right. Can you tell us um, how that came about? Um, the same driver came to pick me up. Did you receive a phone call prior to that? Sorry? Did you receive a phone call prior to the driver coming to pick you up? Right. So the weekend before that, I had finished um, editing that part to include the provinces and the schools that I wanted to be part of it. So I had left Jimbi a message. So Jimbi has a no-caller ID that she normally calls me with, but she also has a private number, even though she hardly, um, she has her own number that she hardly uses. So, and if you call her, you either don't get her or, or she hardly picks up that phone, but she will call you with her no-caller ID. Or if you call her on her direct number, she will hang it up and she will call you with the no-caller ID. So I had left her a message, a text message to tell her that I am done doing that, putting in the editing they wanted me to do, and what should I do next, right? Um, so I think she received that message that weekend, and then she got back to me for this January 14th. And um, she asked me to come. It was the same landing 
um, who came to pick me up at home after 7, um, um, 7 13 p.m. So the purpose of this second private meeting was again to discuss your project. Right. Was it obvious to you um, whether you would be meeting Jimbe alone or the, uh, the president as well prior to arriving at State House? I, I knew prior to arriving, even though she didn't say it, but going by what um, happened the last time, I assume it's the same, and he's the one who asked me to edit it. So if I'm taking it back, it would be to him or he will be there. So this time around, I knew that I was taking it to him. So you would have arrived at State House somewhere after 8 p.m.? Yes, let's say. Okay. Right. Um, can you tell us what, uh, what happened when you arrived? Um, same routine. We passed through the gate and the second one. Um, but this time around, um, King Papa did not come to open the door. And it was not at the same place um, that we had gone to the first time. This other house room was closer to the entrance on the left and we did not have to go through stairs but we passed um, a corridor and I could remember there was um, what do they call them parrots there were two parrots in a cage and uh, I remember Jimby calling their names I can't remember anymore but we passed the carrot cage and there was a door and we went into um, that house Again, a living room, different chairs, different decorations, and um, but this time around it had pictures, family pictures on the walls of his son and his daughter and um, the wife at the time. Those pictures were also there. Um, so the TV was also on. I think this was the day there was... Um, rustling between, um, was, there was a Senegalese rustling, a major rustling that he was watching. Again, um, this time around, he was not having the big Ngarambu on, but a lesser one, the, the, um, the Ngenso one. The, the last piece that you have is what he had on, and um, the pants that he was wearing. So he looked way, way smaller than he actually is and he's not wearing a hat like the first one. And I don't know if me staring at him, he kind of miscalculated that at, at that point, at some point, because I would actually stare into his head, right? Because I was just fascinated by how the persona, like it's just so different, right? But again, um, I grew up my whole life seeing a big, big ngarambuba and a hat and a knife on top of a TV, on top of a car, you know, and then now it's just this head that looks like a football and just, you know, so I couldn't say it directly, but that, that was something that was happening that I, I was doing and I was looking at. Um... But then, yeah, he was very f much into the body, you know, and judging who he thinks is this and it's not that. And as we were sitting there, I was also there watching the TV. Jimby was also there. And he had a phone that was next to him most of the time. It always is. And um, he's on the phone. He's talking to somebody and then in English. And then he hangs up. And then he picks another call. But... The oddlies who were just outside the room will always let him know that there's a call to pick. And then he will pick the call up. And when he needed something, when he needed something, he would also call in. I hardly do hear what he is saying, but an oddly will walk in with a bottle of water and place it down. And the oddly will also walk in with a pack of cigarettes and place it down. So now this is the second visit is when I am actually not like scared or anything, but I'm just so, it's like the veil is just unfolded. I was like, oh, 
okay, I wasn't expecting that, and I wasn't expecting that. I didn't know that you smoke, and why are you comfortable smoking in front of me, you know? And, um, but as I was having those questions too at the same time, um, a Seth came in, his personal Seth, um, who also brought in food that he was supposed to eat later on the table. And, but what made me get back to the space that I was in is that it's either he called his wife or his wife called him when I was there. And he was on the phone, hello Sherry, and he was speaking French mostly. Um, so they spoke, and then he spoke to her, good night, bonne nuit, and all that, and then he placed the phone. So that put me back into my space of, oh, okay, all right, that was cool, and I'm in her sitting room, and that's that, right? Um, so the conversations went on, he was talking about the bore, thank God the bore kind of finished, because then he got in, back into... Um, the project and what the project needed and how much he thinks will go into the project. So you mentioned that when you saw him that evening, you were surprised by the fact that he appeared very big on TV, right. but when you saw him, he appeared much smaller, seemed casual, didn't have his hat on. Right. I forgot to ask you a question um, before your arrival at State House. Right. Um, was there any kind of comment or input on what you should wear? Yes. Um, to go and see the president? Yes. Tell us so about that. So this pickup, um, Jimbe came for this pickup as well. So when I came, I was, um, before this, what I was wearing on here, which is um, a blazer and a shirt and then a, a long skirt. I was wearing a dress, because I wore a dress the first time that I went, um, a brown dress. So she said to me that, why do you like wearing um, mere clothes, like older people clothes, that the cloth was big? Um, and she asked if I could change the clothes and, you know, something more fitting to me. By something more fitting, as in something more fitting to your body? Yes. Um, so you had this conversation, was it the first time or this, um, or this time, on the 14th of January? So the second time is when we had this conversation. The second time. Right. And so what about the 14th of January? What do you mean by the 14th? Is oh, the we're talking about the 14th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what did you do after she suggested that you wear something more fitting? I insisted on what I was wearing, yeah. Um, at that point, um, what was going through your mind when she tried to suggest what kind of clothing you should wear to go and meet the president? Hmm. Um, in that moment, I think I was um, just a bit offended that she thinks I'm not stylish enough, because mandamaya kar dress bo, right? And Do you interpret that? That I liked, I liked the dress. It was a favorite dress. Yeah. Um, so you felt offended, um, but you still maintained what you wanted to wear, yeah. um, which was that long dress. And um, you told us what happened when you arrived. Um, you mentioned that at some point, um, his wife called or he called his wife. Yeah. And um, you said after that conversation, you thought, oh, I'm in her sitting room. And then you thought um, you went back to your own space. What do you mean by that? The space of there is nothing inappropriate happening in a way. Because the honest truth is I felt that was happening, not inappropriate to my body or sexually, but inappropriate for a president to be smoking in my presence. Yeah. And so from everything that you've said, right. um, that appears to be a different residence, meaning the family residence, because you saw photos of the family right. on the wall, which is different from the previous residence that you described. Right. 
Um, can you tell us what else happened um, that evening in terms of the conversation that you had and anything else that happened? Um, so he asked me how much I have had for the budget for the project. And I told him it should be like around 60,000 Dalasi. And then I think he offered to increase that, that 60,000 wasn't enough, so 100,000 Dalasi will do for, for that project. So you suggested a particular budget, 60,000, and yes. he increased that budget and said you should make right. it more. Um, at that point, did anything else happen? Did um, he say anything else to you? Did he do anything else? I think I made a comment about, I will take it to the Ministry of Education. And then he said, oh no, so, because I was thinking that I will get the money on that day to take it, so I'll take the project to the Ministry of Education because I can't implement it without them anyways, because I need their connections to schools and the letters will be written on their behalf and on behalf of a pageant of what they've organized. Um, so when I said that, he said to me that the money would actually, um, he will call me to come and pick up the money, but so it means it wasn't there for that night, but he will call me to come and pick up the money. And um, yeah, I think he says something like it's um, like that I should slow down because immediately he talked about it. I said that I was going to take it to the ministry. Yeah, we had that conversation too. Apart from the discussions surrounding the actual project that you were working on, right. did you discuss any other issues that night? Um, that was the same night he also said to me that he would, that he thinks that I am brilliant, that I'm able to pull this together in a very short sp um, span. And he offered that if I would like to work as a protocol officer at the State House. Um, I thought it was a great offer at the time, but also I know that I have never walked in my life and I do not have any experience of working anywhere. And it was nerve wracking to me in that moment. I am very bad with um, capturing names or dates. So I figured it will not be a great idea to work at such a high office, knowing how clumsy I can be. So to me, I was telling him that that would be a great offer if I study and come back and I don't mind serving the State House or the White House, but right now I will not be able to do that because I will not be able to live up to your expectations. At that point, he knew that you were attending, um, you were still in school, you were right. attending the Gambia College. Right. Um, and he had given you a lot of previous advice about focusing on your education and um, not being distracted. Right. Yet in the same vein, he was offering you a job as a protocol officer, yeah. which would have meant having to leave school in order to take up that position. Is yeah. that correct? Yes. When he made that offer and you declined, um, what happened next? Did he say anything else? Um... I think he, he understood. He said that, okay, that's, that's, I think he was okay with it. He didn't say much or get into the common statement of you're stubborn. Yeah. And how did that, um, that evening end? Um, it ended with Jimby left the room to go get um, the chef that I said came in. Uh, with the food, and I think he was about to have his dinner. Um, he hugged me that night too. Again, nothing, um, uh, nothing funny. But I guess looking at it now, and not at that time, the fact that he was wearing um, a small genso probably is not the greatest um, um, time to hug. But there was no touching or anything inappropriate. And then I had him say that this was a productive evening. We have had so much on. Uh, we've talked about so much. And then I left for home again with the same driver. So from what you've said that evening, you didn't feel any um, anything strange? You didn't think there was anything inappropriate about at your interactions? At the time, yes. How much time did you spend 
at State House this time, mm. well, at the residence? It was way less than the previous one. It wasn't that late that day because we got there earlier. But um, two hours, maybe? Yeah. So it was a longer period because there was so much more happening. But also I got home earlier because we left home earlier. So if you left home sometime um, after 7.30 and you got to State House somewhere after 8 p.m., two hours later would have been sometime after 10 p.m., so you would have gotten home around 11 after 11, is that correct? Yeah. Um, after that, can you tell us um, what happened? What was your next interaction? Um, the next interaction was uh, official um, interaction that happened. Um, Sorry, just to clarify, you said right. the same driver dropped you off at home. Yes. And that would be landing Sanyang. Yes. Okay. Right. Um, please continue. Um, so, okay, this is kind of like, so in between that, what happened was Jimby formally visited my home. So she told me, she called me that she wanted to come and see uh, my mom and my family to extend greetings and to congratulate them on my win and um, if they were home. That evening, mom was home, dad was also at home. So Jimby came to the house. Um, I'm not sure which driver brought her because the driver stayed in the car or not. I can't remember. Do you recall if this was still in January 2015 or um, later than that? No, it was still in January, between Je January and before the independence celebration between there. So sometime between January and um, February yeah. 18th. Um, and from what you said, this is, a, um, this is something she initiated because she called you and wanted to come to the house. Yes. Um, tell us what happened when she arrived. Um, she arrived at the house, you know, greeted all the kids, ran out because she came in a big black car with um, the same number plate. Was it a plain number plate or the GG plate? But it was some um, a number plate that will call attention to, you will know it's a government car or something like that. And all the kids came out, all my siblings and myself because I just came from helping... Um, my uh, cousin brother fetch water because we didn't have water at the time at that time in the house. Um, but it is our house. It is a home that my mom built before I ever thought of competing in the Miss July 22nd pageant. Um, we had electricity already in the house. We had molded and painted the house. It was actually complete. The fence was um, quarter way, so it's not like all the way up at this time. But there was no water in the compound. So when Jimmy came in, there were pleasantries and greetings, and my mom invited her into the room, and she had a black book and a pen in her hand. They spoke, Wolof, how are you? She sat on the couch, my dad and my mom and myself. And she's like, well, I am here to say, you know, that you have a great daughter and that you should protect her and that we really want her to further her education because um, we think that she would be a great asset and almost most of the things that Yaya Jambe had said and that the president is actually very proud of her and um, she would like it if she concentrates on her education and not be distracted by um, um, men or uh, other issues, but to actually be a productive part of society. That's what Jimbe was relating. She kept saying we. We, we is that yeah. correct? Yes. And what did you understand by we? Um, I, I'm trying to make sure that I talk in in the in that moment and not on my knowledge of now. Um, the we, I, at that time, I don't know how I felt about the we, if I was understanding it from we the government or we as in him and Jame as a team. I wasn't sure how I interpreted that at the time. So um, continue to tell us about that conversation that she was having with um, you and your parents. Um, she talked about that and also re irritated re that if 
I'm really serious about my studies, that they really want to help me um, 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 continue my studies and do my studies. Mind you, um, before this, I've never had the conversation of the studies with Jimbi or the scholarship or where I want to study at this point. Um, they did that, and my mom also thanked her and said, thank you for coming, you know, thank you for all that you do. This is really great. great. And um, if she can get scholarship to go and study, that's fine. She's my first burn, and I am very strong with education. I myself, without scholarship or sponsorship, I'm able to take myself through college and university and um, all that, so that would be nice. And Jimby said, yeah, sure, let's see how her project does. My dad also weighed in and thanked her, and um, Jimby then started to walk out of the room because there's a long corridor. Um, she didn't on that day give my parents anything or give me anything or, you know, as a way of saying thank you. That did not happen. It was all word of mouth exchange. When Jimby stepped out of the house, my cousin brother was coming from the tap at the time um, with a wheelbarrow and b b um, bottles of water on it because we used to go and fetch at a home opposite us that had tap at the time. We didn't because we just moved in. And um, I think my mom even applied at some point, but it takes forever for them to respond or bring in the water. So when Jimmy stepped out and saw the, my brother with the water, he said, oh, you guys do not have um, water here? I said, no, water has not been instilled. So she said, okay. Jimmy went to the side with her phone. She made a call. I'm assuming she made a call to reach the president at the time. Um, then, whether she called back the president or the president called him, I don't know who called who, but Jimmy gave me the phone to answer. But while she was on the phone, I could hear her say, Saxlency, Saxlency again. And as soon as I heard that, I knew that it was the president that she was talking to. So she gave me the phone to talk to him. And um, I took the phone. And he said, hello, you know, you fuller girl. Again, we got into, she got into the jokes of um, tribal jokes and uh, how are you, Jimby? We came to visit, the Jolas came, um, your fathers came to visit you today as in the jovial relationship between Jolas and Fulas that our fathers have come to visit us. And um, at this point now, I also call him Sa Excellency because that's what I hear everybody call him. And so I wasn't calling him Oga. I wasn't that psycho, psychopathic or fancy. I was not calling him daddy or scholarship chief in my I wasn't calling him any of that. I was calling him Sa Excellency because that's what I picked up from Jimby, and Jimby is closer to him, so if Jimby calls him that, it is only appropriate that I call him that. And he did answer to that as well. So he went on to say that he did hear that we do not have water, and um, that he will take care of it. That was it, that he will take care of it. So that phone call ended, there were greetings and pleasantries, and then Jimby went home. And then water came in sometime sooner than one would anticipate, I guess, yeah. And what do you mean by that? Was that a matter of days or weeks or months? Hmm. I don't think it's up to months. <laughs> uh, you can't look elsewhere okay. for an answer. Um, <laughs> Just from what you recall, right. um, was it a matter of days or a matter of weeks? Um, I would say weeks. You know, it wasn't it wasn't that long, so it should be weeks. Yeah. And so water came in the form of, like, who came to install water? The national and electricity water. Nawek. Yes. Okay. Nawek installed the water, so, but they started with the digging first. Um, they digged in, and I remember my um, 
Who was it? I have an auntie who was home who was like, no, no, do you have any love when I get to go and hop if you need a naked feed Jill I at? So, but so it means it was faster. It came faster. They dig, digged, put in the pipes, and then installed the water at the, at the house. And uh, who paid for that? Sorry? Who paid for the installation? I did not see the um, invoice for the installation. I did not see where it was given. The information I got on it is that um, it will be taken care of. So I'm assuming um, it is paid for by the president or Jim B or it was loaned or whichever happened. I do not know the um, money transaction that happened there. So after that visit um, right. from Jimbe, mm -hmm. and then some time later, um, could have been a matter of weeks, now I can install running water um, at your home. What happened next? What was the next interaction that you had with either Jim Bay or the president or state house in any any sort of form. Um, the next interaction was a festival in Kanin Lai that was called the Farmers Market something. So the idea of this event was farmers in the region were to bring their product and their produce to the the similar to the Makati Square of Banjul that is in Kanin Lai, it is in the residence of the State House, um, that they will display their products and the President will take a look and will help them kind of buy off their products. So that is what the event was and we were to go there. I remember it was a bad day of a cousin sister of mine that I was attending, but then I rushed home, I packed my bag because they said that we were going to spend three days at State House. Um, on this trip, not land, landing did not take us. A boss took us. A boss from one of the ministry was used, ministry of something. I think if I look in the pictures, I will see the name of the ministry on the bus. I do not know the driver, and I've never met the driver. And I was the last person to be picked up. So the boss went for the girls who lived in Bacau and Kanifing and Sarah Kunda and I was the last one to be picked up. And I remember the girl from Amitage traveled all the way from Amitage to the Combos to also um, be part of that event. Oh no, she didn't come to the Combos, she traveled from Amitage to Kanilai, so we met there. Um, so yeah, I jumped on the bus, and then we went to, again, I can vividly remember this was school days, because I know that I um, I missed it. We went to Kanilai, and when you get into the main gate of the Kanilai, um, before you get to the gate on your right is the field where the events happens, and then you open a gate where you go into the premises of the Kanilai State House. And when you go further, there's um, it's like a compound, and it has a fence on your right. And there's another compound on your left that also is a compound, but it is the president's residence. And on this ha on this side is um, it has houses and homes, but it looks like um, like a boarding school setup, but in a bigger way. So when you got in, there's a big um, house, and when you walk down the hall, there's a bedroom on every on left and the right. One, two, three bedrooms, then you have a washroom. One, two, three bedrooms, and then you have a washroom. And uh, so this is where we were based. This is where we got to. And um, there was a, a house that I would say it's almost um, this size, and there were big queen-size beds inside the house that was enough for all of us as the girls to stay in that house. And on the adjacent side of that was a similar one where the protocols where leave it and had to spend the night in. So this is where we settled in, and um, so the event started on February 2nd. Oh no, um, January 29th is when we got there. Um, and then we spent 
January 29, uh, January 30th, and January 21st in Kanilai. Right. So on the first day was um, the display of um, the fruits by the farmers. So we were home most of the time. So when we got up in the morning, um, that is the first time I actually was able to know which protocol was kind of who or who was related to who. I remember meeting Ndei, who was said to be Jimbi's sister. I remember seeing again the same Aisha Barry who picked me the first time I went to the gate. Um, I remember other protocols that I've seen around. And the chief of protocol at the time who was also, okay, I forgot the name so I wouldn't say, uh, but the chief of, the assistant chief of protocol who was a female at the time, um, she also lived in that room. So we lived in this room with our chaperone, Auntie Aisha, and we spent the night there together um, all these three days. As the first day was the display of farmer's market, the second day was, um, was a religious gummo night that we went to the residence, so you cross, we left our gate and our compound, we went into the next one, and on the outside, before you get into the residence of the president, there were all groups of religious, um, um, what will they call it, gummo groups that do sikar and, you know, so there were chairs and ministers were supposed to sit in the front, and we were right behind the president, me and the other girls, but me on the first chair as usual. So, but at this point, what has been sifting or I've been calculating in my head was, in public, the president really almost did not know my name, and I've already interacted with him um, twice personally before all this. But in Kanilai and in events, in between this meeting and not meeting, was... Um, um, like if you passed us, he would engage uh, with almost everyone, and for me it would be like, oh, um, Paul uh, Bobo, you know, there was a sense of forgetfulness, a portrayal in public that he did not um, know me in a way, and that kind of confused me a little bit, and even when he's coming to see the King Papas and the Oddlies will have his bag that they'll put next to him, and um, he would not, um, King Papa will not also even look the area I am seated at, and um, Jimbi also will engage all of us, of course, in a very nice way, but not to show any sense of I know her or I don't. So that is why I know, or I believe, that most of the girls, of course, who say they do not see what they see or they do not see, in fact, any form of closeness, why that tactic at the time, willfully being played by Yaya Jame, did achieve that, right? So I sat behind him, and the chairs were supposed to be filled by ministers, and they were not filled. I think the Gamo people went on, and there was video being taken. Until a while, the protocols realized that the ministers were not coming to join that, or whoever was supposed to take those main seats in the front. Um, then they asked us to move to the front. So that's when we moved to the front. So now I am sitting to the chair next to the president on the right-hand side, and then followed by the girls as we were in sequence of uh, winners. And we were there, and I remember me and the girls making the jokes when they told us to go in the front. I'm like, oh my God. Because in the back, we were so sleepy. This is about three in the morning. And at least if you're in the back, you can kind of doze off or snooze or jinko and all that. But if you're in the front, all the cameras are right in front of um, you. You can't. So there's this um, just being a miscomportment that one had to do for hours. And he clearly was enjoying the whole, you know. And um, that's what happened at night and no one can leave until he leaves. He left like after four in the morning to go pray. He left to go and pray Fajr. So 
it must be after four somewhere. So when he left and we were all like, thank God. And then we all moved again and went to the next compound where we stayed and then went to bed. Yeah. So we'll leave it at that for now because it's time for the lunch sure. break. And then when we come back, you can continue your story and then I will ask you some follow-up questions. Right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Council, and thank you, Ms. Yalo. We will take a one-hour break and come back at um, uh, half past two. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much.